So we had Lobachenko versus Jermaine Ortiz. Um, I have not caught this fight, and this is a bit of a theme in the last couple of streams. Um, I've not managed to watch it. I've seen there's been some quite close scorecards, though, and quite a few people on Twitter have seen thought that Ortiz might have edged it. Uh, but Lomachenko got the decision. Um, Josh, I'm going to hand over to you. Um, what did you make of this fight? And I don't even know if you watched it, but I believe you did. Yes, yes, I did. I understand where you're coming from. Definitely a time difference on your side, so it's all it's all acceptable. But uh, this turned out to be a pretty good fight, actually. Uh, tougher than what I thought it would be for Vasily Lomachenko. And I have to give mad props to Jermaine Ortiz because I felt like he showed up on a major stage and he made a name for himself. He's, I think, instantly put himself in a place where he's a fighter that I wouldn't want to see again. And I imagine a lot of other boxing fans so it was a very close fight, as you heard. Now, I do think that Lomachenko edged it slightly. I scored it via fight night scores, actually, 115-113 for Vasily Lomachenko. And I think it was those later rounds, those championship rounds, as they mentioned on the broadcast, even, that got him denied. That being said, for those who may have had it even closer or more razor thin than that, I don't think there would be a huge argument because Jermaine Ortiz, he's big. He seems to be very solid fundamentally and just all around. He has a, a good mix of everything, I would say. And his size, it was apparent, and I think he used it well. And he made it very tough for Vasily Lomachenko. And you could tell that when they got tied up that Ortiz was a stronger fighter. Younger, stronger, with Lomachenko coming off of a slight layoff. And, of course, all that's going on in Ukraine, props for him even taking the fight, especially against such a young gun who, while he didn't have that big name, he's definitely a live player and he showed up in a major way. Uh, but I thought that Lomachenko, he showed some signs of life, showed a bit of the old, and I thought he had good form there to tell in uh, early on. You could definitely tell that Ortiz was uh, a puzzle for him, especially those first two rounds, just because of, because of that size and then probably not knowing truly well, I guess they had actually sparred, uh, as a matter of fact. I was going to say he didn't know what he brought to the table fully, but they actually had sparred. I want to say they said about five weeks of sparring, so I think that turned out to be of benefit for Ortiz, as he was mentioning in the lead-ups to the fight. So, man, mad props to uh, Ortiz in a great fight. And I think that the viewers got their money's worth for sure because it was tougher. It was supposed to be a Lomachico showcase, but it turned out to be a very uh, nip and tuck fight. And props to both fighters. They showed some toughness there last night. Yeah, but I've read some good things um, from those that, that caught the fights. And RT has obviously proved himself to be a you know, capable fighter and definitely worth uh, other paydays, I guess, and, and big fights in the future. Um, Alex, what did you make of Lomachenko's performance? I think this is probably one of, one of the worst case scenarios for Devin Haney with Lomachenko uh, receiving this victory. Um, and that is because it seems like Lomachenko is not the Lomachenko that we've seen pre, pre uh, the UK, uh, Ukraine war. Uh, he had trouble, once again, with size and athleticism. Uh, Devin Haney has size and athleticism. He actually said it. He point when Haney came into the ring, Lomachenko said, 135 pounds? 135 pounds, this guy? Devin Haney is a humongous 135 pounder. He's more athletic. He's quicker than a Jermaine Ortiz. Uh, Jermaine gave him trouble with that. Uh, Lomachenko, it was, it was, like I said, it just reminds me of the Teofimo fight. Um, took a while to adjust to find out what he needs to do to to get the distance and timing and the comfort inside that ring and then he turned it on um so yeah lomachenko versus haney everything's pointing towards it as long as haney believes he can make the weight as long as his father says yes we can do it uh we should be looking forward to that and jermaine ortiz proved that he is a guy at 135 that can mix it up unfortunately i think he is going to be offered the shakur fight and I think the kind of person he has shown is he takes on all challenges. So, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, he can keep this form and give Shakur, um, you know, I wouldn't say he has a chance to win, 
but some competition, just like he showed with Lomachenko. So, yeah, man, 135 pound division, as as it stands, uh, is one of the best. Uh, I'm sorry, best divisions in boxing. It's uh, hopefully it stays that way. Yeah, definitely full of talent and lots of interesting matchups to be made there. Uh, do you think that Lomachenko was showing? I mean, I guess you touched on it there, Alex, at the end. He's showing a bit of signs of aging and obviously coming towards the end of his career. Uh, and obviously all the events of the Ukraine obviously takes its toll as well. And we touched on it last time, actually, saying that maybe we, we, we're suggesting that Lomachenko gets sacrificed to these younger, bigger, hungrier fighters. Um I guess it could be a bit of a passing of the torch if he did, did step in with him. But if, if he wasn't to go in against Nevin Haney next and lose, do you think that he'd call it quits at that point, Alex? Mm. Uh, no, I don't think so. Because I think once he gets his Haney matchup, Haney uh, will move up. And then there'll still be a chance to collect the belts. Mm. And I think Lomachenko, he has such confidence in himself that he will get a matchup that's going to be favorable for a vacant belt. And then uh, Bob Arum has already said it. He wants to match up the winner of Haney Lomachenko. But if Haney moves up, then obviously Lomachenko is going to be left. So I would assume they both would get vacant uh, belt uh, title opportunities and then uh, unify together, uh, which will still be what Lomachenko wants to do is to unify the whole division, become undisputed. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, did you have any, anything to add to that there, Josh? Yeah, I think uh, Vega spot on. And another thing, I do think that what it has shown, and at this age is probably apparent anyway, is that 135 is likely the limit for Lomachenko. He's not going any mm -hmm. higher. He would definitely not fare very well from a size perspective if he goes any higher. And I do think that the size difference between him and Devin Haney was pretty glaring. And I think Haney is going to be a lot of trouble for him because the crazy thing about Haney is that he's only 23, which is insane when you really think about it as far as what he's been able to do thus far at only 23 years of age. And I can say that from my perspective, it looks like he gets better and better each time out. So it's going to be tough sledding for Vasily Lomachenko. But given what we know he's capable of when he's really on his game, He's very much, uh, you know, someone who, you know, is right in there, though. Yeah, I um, I saw a, I think it was just a still capture from the aftermath of the fight of Haney in the ring next to Lomachenko, and he just, the, the size, was, he looks so much bigger than him. Um, yeah, it's, it's hard to see any way that Lomachenko mm -hmm. wins that fight. Um, so I, I guess it's, it's the natural next fight that will be made at some point, probably next year. Um, definitely one to keep an eye out for and obviously we'll discuss that again in the future when it when it happens inevitably.